Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Need for Greed. Now, <clears throat> I've been making some more edits to this list. Uh, I went over a big evaluation of a bunch of ramp spells this morning to see if there were any that this list wasn't playing that needed to be played or were high enough power level to be played. Um, and I have a couple for consideration, but one thing uh, that I was reminded of, thank you, Six Sigma, was that... Um, I talked about running Karn in this list not that long ago, and Karn seems like the kind of card we would want. Karn, great creator, that is. Um, sideboarding in this deck felt a little odd, and I understand that it had kind of this El Eladomri's Call package where we could tutor up our silver bullets from the sideboard, but it also kind of felt like that almost should have been Glittering Wish at that point, and Eladomri's Call should be getting like Omnath, Uro, Prime Time pretty consistently. Uh, so this time I've opted for a 14 card sideboard from Karn uh, that we can't put any of these cards in the deck naturally because if we do they interrupt Madcap Experiment into Platinum Empyrean. Uh, so why would we want to? The So this is, this is basically I'm going to be playing the list as you see it for an entire league. There will be no sideboarding or decisions made there. So um, I can use the sideboarding time as literally just recovery time from playing this deck. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I've made no changes to the mana base. Oh, and I cut Serum Visions from the list. Uh, that I meant to make a note of, and I haven't yet. So the only things that Serum Visions did for this list that I liked is it helps build kind of threshold in the graveyard so we can play Uro faster. That's not really necessary considering the inconsistency, and while I agree that Serum Visions is the best cantrip for this deck by a long shot, it kind of feels like um, it's just not that powerful and not that great of a top deck. Now, it might uh, it might work in this deck uh, in different ways that I haven't really taken into consideration yet. There is like a line where we could we could give Sun Given for like Scape Shift. Mystic Sanctuary, Serum Visions, and uh, Bring Delight. And that gives you the scape shift no matter what this turn for 8 mana or 9 mana. And we are losing out on that line with this list. I don't know how frequently that's going to come up. We had it come up one time already, but our opponent had a counter spell for the Bring Delight anyway. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, all right, I think I'm done talking about it. Let's go ahead and take this through a competitive constructed league and see what happens. Whoops, I queued up with the wrong version of the list. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <sighs> don't, you, don't you hate it when you do that? All right, now I'll see you guys in round one. All right. I would like to play first. Reveal Yorian. It's an Elvish Reclaimer start, and we have Bring to Light, so I'm thinking I'm going to keep. Um, we will start by fetching up a Temple Garden into an Elvish Reclaimer. Pass the turn. Opponent starts Island, Bobble, Bobble, Emery. So this is the Emery combo deck. This really makes me wish that I had a uh, um, Bajuka Bog in this list. We find a Madcap Experiment. So play Marsh Flats. Pass the turn. We're going to be tutoring for flagstones, I think. Second Emery for our opponent. I mean, I could go get um, the Grave Hate Desert. Opponent cracks Bobble, looking at her top deck. Replays Bobble. Plays a Steam Vents untapped into a Chromatic Star. 
I could also path Emery here if I wanted to. Crack Marsh Flats. Get a snow covered swamp. Sack the swamp. Um, should I get scavenger grounds? Yeah, I probably should get scavenger grounds, even though I don't want to. We untap. They draw a card. We draw windswept teeth. Um, we could start trying to beat down. We could also path them right now. Um, if we path, we lose access to um, scavenger grounds for a turn. Man, I don't know. Play Hinterland Harbor. They have three cards in hand, but they can draw up to two more. Yeah, I think letting them have access to an Emery probably is not a good idea, so we're just going to path now while they don't have counter magic. Or they could have force negation, but... Okay, opponent gets a planes, so I fix their mana. Um... I am going to attack with the Reclaimer this turn. If I had Bajuka Bog in the deck, I wouldn't. Um, this does put them within double Empyrean Swing lethal. <laughs> Don't know if that's going to matter or not. Opponent plays a Grinding Station. Plays an Arid Mesa. Passes. We untap and draw Mystic Sanctuary. Play Arid Mesa. Go to combat. Attack for three. When it goes to 12. Um, and the question is, can I madcap experiment here? Or can I, or should I leave up scavenger grounds? And they're really close to just like grinding station lethal. Like they're really close to going infinite. They just have to put underworld breach onto the battlefield and they either have one or two more left in the deck. So I think I'm just gonna leave up scavenger grounds. This is the one benefit that this has over Bajuka Bog, is that it can be at instant speed. I mean, Bog can be with Reclaimer too, but... Put a Cracks Bobble. Passes. We're going to fetch up a Raugrin Triome. Untap. They draw a card. We draw an Into the North. So play Windswept Heat. Go to Combat. Attack them for three. Take them to eight. Fetch with Windswept Teeth. We'll get a basic forest, not snow covered. And then into the north, like this. We'll get a snow covered island. Okay, put up Metallic Rebukes. Not gonna pay for it, just gonna leave up Scavenger Grounds. Bona plays a Flooded Strand, cracks Flooded Strand, gets a land, two cards in hand, they pass, we untap, we draw to Fairy, um, only one island, so Mystic Sanctuary is going to enter tapped, go to combat, attack for three, when it goes to four, play Mystic Sanctuary tapped, pass the turn, when it untaps and draws, and they crack Bobble. They're getting a little desperate here. I think I think getting Scavenger Grounds and just leaving it up religiously this whole time is what is winning me this game. Okay, we draw Botanical Sanctum, go to combat. Attack for three. Play Botanical Sanctum. Play Teferi. Uptick. Pass the turn. We don't have any counter spells, um, but our opponent doesn't know that. Okay, opponent plays Mox Amber. They're gonna go for the breach now. So the question is, I think we let this resolve. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, make a Thopter. So, they're going to make a bunch of Thopters this turn. They can mill themselves a lot. Mox Amber will produce a mana. 
They can actually mill themselves infinitely. Um, all right. The thing, though, is Psy gives us priority to respond when a spell is cast. That might give us an opportunity to actually scavenger grounds. The issue is, if I, um, if I scavenger grounds in response to Underworld Breach, they can just go infinite with Mox Amber. Oh, actually, I should have done that, because they didn't have enough cards in Grave to actually cycle to what they needed. I think they wouldn't have had the mana. We can stop them from winning instantaneously with, uh, what's it called? Um, Thassa's Oracle, depending on how they play. Unless they have multiple Thassa's Oracles, I guess in that case it doesn't work. It's gonna be a little agonizing to have my opponent step through the combo this way. I guess if they're holding Thassa's Oracle in hand, this doesn't work. So they can start floating a bunch of mana. I don't really have an opportunity to interrupt the combo if they're holding um, the Mox. Or if they're holding um, Thassa's Oracle. Let me think about this before I let this continue. Um, if I activate it... If they're holding um, if they're holding Thassa's Oracle, I can't actually stop them from doing anything. So we basically have to hope that it's in the grave right now. Or that it's going to go to the grave. We have to hope that my opponent isn't holding it. I suppose maybe it was correct to actually down tick to fairy even though we weren't supposed to, or even though we couldn't get a draw because then we could have prevented our opponent from using all this mana. Okay. I think my opponent is probably holding it, which is why they're playing the way that they are, why they did all the extra drawing. At which point we did miss our opportunity, but I didn't think about that. It's a lot easier to play against combo decks that i played in the past. I've never played my opponent's deck. Hmm. Yeah, if I were to crack Scavenger Grounds right now, what would happen? We'd exile the grave, Mox Amber would resolve, my opponent would be able to sack to mill, and then get an untapped trigger. So if I were to crack Scavenger Grounds right now, we'd exile the grave, Mox Amber would untap, they'd sack it, mill three cards, and then have four cards in Grave, so they'd be able to just keep milling. Alright, so that doesn't do anything. I could kill them if we had Mikokoro. <laughs> and didn't attack with, uh... Or if I had gotten it on an earlier turn, that'd be funny. Opponent cracks Chromatic Star to draw. Oh, so what they're gonna do now is because they know it's in the last few cards in their deck. Is that right? Does that make sense? Opponent decides against that. They crack Star to draw, adding white mana. So they're gonna play Teferi to try and prevent us from having a removal spell, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, all right, they were holding it. Sorry for agonizingly playing that out, but uh, it also let me have a better understanding of what was going on in my opponent's deck. So no sideboard, run it back. The cool thing is if we can... Oh, gosh. Did I damage that? Nope. I'm sorry, I bumped the lamp. It's got this very nice glass lampshade on it, and... That's what the, like, ringing noise is. But, like, <laughs> I, uh, I it started to fall and it clipped something, but it didn't, uh, didn't break, thankfully. Alright, I'd like to play first. The Eliorian. Um, it's an all-ramp hand with a lightning bolt. I think we can do better. Alright, well, it's an all-ramp hand without a lightning bolt, but, uh, it's a very good ramp. So, let's try this. So, what we're gonna do first is fetch up a stomping ground and search for tomorrow. I could get a breeding pool and search for tomorrow. Let's get a stomping ground, because we're probably not growth spiraling on turn two anyway. So, stomping ground untapped. Suspend search for tomorrow. Next turn we can ramp at growth, we can get an island for growth spiral. Or I could just pollute a delta for an island, I guess. It doesn't matter. Okay, put it plays. Flooded strand, search for tomorrow, ticking down. We get scape shift. Well, that's good news. Play a mountain. Rampant growth. Get an island. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a flooded strand again. Search for tomorrow coming off. Suspend. Gonna get a basic forest. We draw primeval titan. Growth spiral. Play polluted delta. 
crack polluted delta, get a snow covered island. No real reason to be getting basics here, so I guess I should be like shocking a hollowed fountain or something. Play coiling oracle. That got us to battle of wits. <laughs> uh, in before we uh, get battle of wits metallic rebuked. All right, opponent gets a sacred foundry. Cracks flooded strand to get a steam vents. Realizes that they have like at most two more turns unless they interact. <laughs> oh man, what a card to reveal. I mean, like, if we draw a land and uh, Battle of Wits gets countered, we can cast Primeval Titan. Engineered Explosives on zero. They play Grinding Station. Mm-hmm. All right, we untap. We draw a forest. So play a forest. Attempt to play Battle of Wits, because it's technically a faster win than prime time. Um, and then if it resolved... Okay. Um, I have no doubt my opponent can, like, cobble away together to win. But, like, man, why why doesn't Battle of Wits just say you win when it resolves? Why, why does it have to be at the beginning of your upkeep? I guess five mana just straight win the game is probably a little bit too good. Um, okay, yeah, with Mox Amber, that's actually the win. We couldn't have prevented this, I don't think. Hang on, this might not be a win. Um... They can't get a legendary creature to get Mox Amber to make mana, and they don't have double blue. So unless they're holding a land... I don't know, I'll just F6 and see if we win with Battle of Wits or not. Um, casting Primeval Titan was definitely not the play, if this is the case. Oh, they can play Emery, I forgot. Oh, can they? Do they have enough cards in Grave? So they play Mox Amber... And they can't play Emery because they don't have three other cards. So they have to just keep milling. They have to have a blue source in hand for this to work. And not have played a land this turn. Let me check the game log really quick. Um, they played Minamo this turn. I don't think my opponent can win. <gasps> we won with Battle of Wits. Oh, yes. Perfect. That's what we came here to do. Just like we drew it up. Run it back. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. We realized it before our opponent did. That's excellent. Mm. <laughs> no sideboarding, because this is the sideboardless version. Reveal Yorian. Um, it's another scape shifty hand, so I guess I guess we'll keep. I don't know that two rampant growth effects are gonna be good enough, but we don't really have a choice, I guess. We have a lot worse hands than this, considering we are Battle of Wits, so we're going to keep. Uh, we'll start Misty fetching Raugrin Triome, um, probably into a Farseek for a random Triland that has green in it like Ketria. Alright, opponent starts Chromatic Star. We draw Iona, which is the opposite of a card. Uh, crack Misty. We're just going to do this all... Um, on our turn so I can leverage the F6 button a little bit because we're not doing anything else for a while. We just need to get to seven lands and we kill our opponent with Escape Shift. And we can kill our opponent on seven lands with Escape Shift through a Metallic Rebuke. So if they don't have a really good combo hand um, or we just completely brick. If they have a really good combo hand or we completely brick is how we lose. And ha hoping your opponent has a bad hand is not a good way to win the game. Um, I've said that about a hundred times on my channel, and I still mean it. Get a Raugrin Triome. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Plays an Arid Mesa. Cracks Arid Mesa. For a Hollowed Fountain, untapped. Plays Grinding Station. So I guess if in the next two turns we drew an untapped land, and uh, Karn would be like the best thing. Play Botanical Sanctum. Farseek for a Ketria Triome. Pass the turn. We could do an early scape shift just for the Grave Hate land. <laughs> um, I guess that depends on whether or not we die this turn and whether or not we think we're going to die next turn. Really wish I was main decking Bajuka Bogs. Underworld Breach, so they've got us. There's like no way they don't have us. Now they have plenty of cards in the grave. They have uh, Mishra's Baubles. They have at least ten cards in the grave, which means at minimum they're going to have six, which means they can play at least two other cards out of their grave. So, 
Yeah, unfortunately, my opponent had a reasonable combo hand that got us on turn three. Uh, we don't play counter spells for interaction, and uh, there's not a lot of hands we could have that would actually interact with what our opponent's doing. So, I'm okay with this. We won a game with Battle of Wits by casting Battle of Wits. So, I believe, officially, that gives me the moral high ground here. <laughs> so, um, I am going to concede. Well, I guess I'll just mute, and I'll come back at the end of the combo here. I'll let you know if anything interesting happens. There is some chance my opponent messes up the combo or is unable to actually win the game. Uh, but they have a Mox Amber and they just found an Emery, so I think they've got us. Alrighty, our opponent did end up getting us. Um, that's unfortunate, but like I said, moral high ground, we're good. I will restart the client and see you guys in round two. Alrighty, here we go for round two. I would like to play first. We'll reveal Yorian. I mean, it's a bring the light hand, so we'll keep. We'll go ahead and start Scalding Tarn past the turn. We're going to fetch up a Ketria Triome to begin with. Opponent starts Flooded Strand Ornithopter. So this is either Hammer Time or um, it could be like Tempered Steel. It's probably Hammer Time, though. Just without Luris, I guess. I wonder what that gives them access to that I'm not thinking of. Like Batter Skull? Oh, this is definitely Hammer Time. <laughs> Alright. So we're probably just going to be dead before we actually get the chance to do anything, but... Do our best. Let's get Ketria Triome. Untap. Draw Polluted Delta. Play Grove. Um, I'm going to play Soccer Tribe Elder because it potentially lets us survive one hit by blocking. But it plays a Memnite. Plays a Colossus Hammer. But Sigarda's Aid lets you cast it with Flash. Why would you do it now when, like, you could have attacked first and then gotten in the 10 damage? You lose flying when you equip this way, opponent. Alright, Chump. Uh, sack to get white mana. For Bring to Light. We untap. We draw a Madcap Experiment, which actually might keep us alive. Excellent. Um, play Polluted Delta. Fetch up a basic island. <laughs> play Madcap Experiment. F6. <clears throat> I mean, it, we're probably just going to get completely destroyed by, uh, like, a Path to Exile or something here. Opponent plays an Ink Moth next. No! <laughs> Ink Moth will kill us! Two mana... Okay, opponent gets a Stoneforge Mystic. We need an answer for that Ink Moth Nexus. Because while our life total can't change, that doesn't mean we're uh, immune to poison. That's lame. <laughs> That's, once again, um, while the riskier choice, Platinum Angel would actually keep us alive here. We need to draw something and fast. Creature, instant, or sorcery card. So we could get gifts, and then... Um, Put in Elishnorn or Terastodon. Opponent will have enough mana to animate and equip next turn. We don't know if they're holding another hammer, though. Okay, we're getting thought seized, so we're going to lose Bring to Light. We only revealed 91 cards. I'm not sure if they know what's happening yet. <laughs> Opponent takes Bring to Light from us, which was our potential savior. Man, if I was playing Reap and So, it would have worked. Opponent attacks for 10 for no reason. We take no damage. Untap. We draw a Colonnade. I mean, that potentially blocks next turn if they don't have another Colossus Hammer. Um, we have two islands. Um, so I can into the north for an island. Fetch Misty Rainforest. Four color. Bring to light next turn. Yeah. Okay, into the north. Snow Covered Island. So fetching the basic island mattered here, potentially. Because we needed to into the north for a snow-covered island. Play Misty. Pass the turn. Now as long as our opponent doesn't uh, hammer up Ink Moth here, we're fine. If they do put a hammer on Ink Moth, uh, and they don't do it at instant speed, we have to block with Pat Platinum Virion. And then somehow find a way to win using uh, Bring to Light next turn. Okay, opponent plays a Silent Clearing. It oh no! <laughs> 
Okay, well, we could still block with Platinum Empyrean. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, we could probably bring the light for Scape Shift and win Platinum Empyrean, the seven turn fog. <laughs> it's like the thousand year storm, but way worse. <laughs> I can't believe I found a way to win this. Okay, opponent attacks, attacks, attacks. Well, we got a block, so we don't die to infect. I'm glad we don't just have the bounce land in hand, because we would not be able to win if I had to play a bounce land this turn. Okay, end step. Fetch with Misty. Get a Mystic Sanctuary. Putting Bring to Light on top of our deck. Untap. Draw Bring to Light. Play Colonnade. Okay, blue, white, red, green... Redundant blue. Four colors. Bring the light. And the life gain off of Grove didn't matter for our opponent. Uh, bring the light cast Scape Shift. One Valakut, five mountains. Or six mountains is what we need. So Valakut. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is going to take a while, but we will win this way. Okay. Um, stomping Ground. Uh, steam Vents. Raugrin Triome, Sacred Foundry, Human Moto. Okay, uh, I'll get another Steam Vents, and then probably just another Stomping. All right, three, six, Moto, Moto. That jittering is uh, really disconcerting. <laughs> three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Always yes, always. Nice. <laughs> I can't believe we figured that out. That required some pretty big foresight into getting multiple islands for that Mystic Sanctuary play. <laughs> that was exciting. All right. Um, I mean, we're not we we don't have a sideboard, so we're just gonna submit it again and see see what happens. All right. So reveal Orion. Well, we have a path this time. Um, even though this is effectively like a mulligan to five, uh, we're gonna keep. Between Path and Karn, maybe we can get there. Okay, opponent starts Snow-Covered Plains, Sigarda's Aid, Memnite, Ornithopter, passes. We untap, we draw Prime Time, start Arid Mesa, pass the turn. So if my opponent goes for the turn two, um, we need to fetch up a Hollowed Fountain, and then Path. Okay, they crack Windswept Teeth. If they don't go for the turn two... Um, if they're going for the turn three, we need to get Raugrin Triome. The only way this goes wrong is if they have Colossus Hammer and Thoughtseize. Okay, opponent attacks for one. We go down to 19. Opponent does have Colossus Hammer. Fetch with Arid Mesa. Get Raugrin Triome. Untap. We get a Sakura Tribe Elder, which sucks because we would love to play a ramp spell here and can't. So we pass to our opponent. No! <laughs> they have a Thoughtseize! What are we supposed to do about that? This is exactly what we needed to not happen. Um, I guess we path the Memnite to prevent one damage. Oh, they're going to take Soccer Tribe Elder now. Um, because we could potentially use that to block next turn. They're going to play Hammer this turn, so if they put it on Ornithopter, it loses flying anyway. <laughs> we had, like, the perfect hand. I mean, like... It was not the perfect hand, but at the same time, the odds that this hand went wrong was very high because it did fold to a single Thought Seize, which my opponent plays at least four of. Um, okay, so they play Colossus Hammer, they suit up Ornithopter, and they're going to hit us for 11, right? Yep, okay. Here, them playing it at Sorcery Speed doesn't matter. So we take 11, and even if I play Uro, I'm going to go to 10 next turn. We untap, we draw Birds. Birds can block. <laughs> Pass the turn. <laughs> so I have to draw another path. I don't even have enough mana to play Blast Zone. Maybe playing, um... Uh... Maybe playing out Soccer Tribe Elder was better than holding up path there, and I just didn't think about it. Like, maybe that was what I had to do. So I think the only things we can top deck that might actually get us out of this mess is, um... If we top deck Soccer Tribe Elder or Coiling Oracle, something that can block while also gaining us an advantage here. Because our life total is too low for Uro, unfortunately, and they just took it from us. Core Outfitter. Are they going to move Colossus Hammer or are they just going to play a dork? They are going to move the hammer. We play an Ornithopter. 
We draw a land that can't do anything for us. So we're going to go ahead and scoop. That is unfortunate. Uh, run it back. No sideboarding because we don't have one. All right. Uh, we'll play first. Reveal Yorian. Um, no, we got a mulligan for something else. Okay, this this might do it. There is a chance. Uh, we have to choose between Search for Morrow on turn one or Rampant Growth on turn two. And I think that's. I think we gotta go for the Search for Tomorrow on turn one. If we draw an untapped land and we can play Karn on turn three, and my opponent has a slightly slow hand that doesn't have an early thought seize, we stand a chance. Or if they can only do 10 damage, we can animate the hammer and give ourselves another turn because the hammer can't be equipped as long as it's a creature. And it's only a 1-1 one -one at that point. So opponent starts uh, Flooded Strand, fetch Flooded Strand into a Godless Shrine. And it's going to be a Thought Seize, which means goodbye Karn. At least they're not setting up for a fast hammer here. I guess. Mem Knight. Well, they could still have a fast hammer. They could still, like, land Sigarda's Aid hammer next turn. Okay, we draw Verdant Catacombs, which is an untapped land here. So, Verdant Catacombs. Fetch with Verdant Catacombs. Get a basic forest. Rampant growth. If I get... Uh, we want to get like a... Oh, I should have gotten a stomping ground, actually. Uh, we need to get a snow-covered plains here. Um, because we're not going to need a Mystic Sanctuary play here. We need to have access to basically as many colors of removal as possible. Um, the problem is I can't, uh, I can't set up for Bring Delight because I fetched wrong. Um, but we're relying solely on top decks, and there's so many things we could top deck. Trying to top deck a specific thing or setting up for a specific thing. Um, this is where Battle of Wits is weakest. Okay, I'm going to play as a Pure Steel Paladin and a Paradise Mantle. So they get to draw Ornithopter, so they can equip for zero. They hit us for one. There's a lot of good things we can top deck here, but we need to top deck... If I get a Mountain, that lets me top deck Madcap Experiment or um, Gifts Ungiven and have a chance. So getting a Mountain here is, I think, our best bet. Okay, we draw Omnath. Wow, okay. Blue, green, white, red, Omnath. Omnath can block as well as it can trips and gains us life. Growth Spiral. So play Zagoth Triome. Gain life. There is a chance. <laughs> we still got to top deck some really good stuff. But there is a chance. Opponent plays a Silent Clearing. If my opponent only plays and equips one hammer, we don't block. And the reason that I say that is, if I top deck a fetch land, I can put Yorian in my hand, um, cast him, flicker Omnath, and get a redraw. Three mana, four mana, what is this? Five mana, is this a Batter Skull? It is a Batter Skull, okay. Batter Skull is intimidating, but it's not the worst thing that could have happened here. So my opponent can suit up the Pure Steel Paladin and swing past the Omnath, um, but we can mitigate most of the damage that's being done right now by just playing lands, because Omnath is strong, and a very, very strong repeatable value engine. Saved by the Elemental right now. Okay, so we untap and we're praying for a great top deck here. I'm going to play Nile Spellbomb because they saw Mystic Sanctuary. Yeah, sideboarding against Battle of Wits doesn't seem like uh, the best thing you could be doing. Oh man, okay. Uh, Summoner's Pact. Let me check the let me check the deck list here. Um, I could go and get Primeval Titan, but I don't have enough uh, islands to have this Mystic Sanctuary coming untapped. I could try casting Growth Spiral. I could go and get. Uro, but Uro would just die because um, my opponent would crack Nile Spellbomb. Um, Dryad of the Elysian Grove doesn't really help. <laughs> Neither does Pan Glacial Worm. Um, Elvish Reclaimer could be good, although just Summoner's Pacting for a 1 2 seems questionable. Um, I could get another Omnath, <laughs> um, but that's about it. 
we'd really prefer to get Primeval Titan, so I could wait to do that until next turn. I think what we do is start with a Growth Spiral and see if we hit a land or not. We draw Bring Delight. So we put Mystic Sanctuary into play. We gain life. Um, I'm going to put Yorian into my hand, I think. Next turn, if we untap, we can either Summoner's Pact for Primeval Titan, get a Wall of Blockers, or we can bring to light, and uh, if I draw a land, I could bring to light into a Scape Shift and probably win that way. I can actually do both um, because of Omnath's second ability. So we'll see what our opponent plays and whether or not we have to block this turn. Another pure steel paladin. They sack silent clearing to draw. So we're getting another turn. Unless they have land hammer, in which case we have... No, we don't have to block. We would go to one. Um, my opponent is going to get out of scape shift range, so we definitely need to go packed for titan here. Steel shaper's gift. Okay, then they can suit up the memnite. Um, they don't have an instant speed way of equipping, so just chump blockers will work. So we have to go for Primeval Titan here. And do we have to block? If we do not block, we go to two. Um, I could bring to light for Platinum Empyrean, and then I could chump Ink Moth with Omnath. Okay, no, no, no. We, we take the 16 here. Because if we draw an untapped land, we can Summoner's Pact and bring to light. Oh, we don't even have to. We can get Crumbling Vestige off of Primetime. Oh, man. Okay. This turn's going to be sweet. Okay, that's not an untapped land. Um, Summoner's Pact. Get Primeval Titan. Cast Primeval Titan. Get Field of the Dead, Crumbling Vestige. Oh, I have to look up a ruling on Omnath, actually. So Field of the Dead, Crumbling Vested. Get some tokens. The problem is... Okay, so I think Omnath's ability doesn't work, or is counted across all Omnath. So if I refresh Omnath, um, it won't do anything extra. Okay, so Field of the Dead, we get some tokens. Because I was thinking, like, oh, I could use the mana to play Yorian, refresh both creatures, get more landfall triggers. Okay. Uh, Crumbling Vestige is going to add black mana. Then we're going to bring to light. This only does damage to cre uh, pl opponent and planes. So we're going to bring to light five mana, I think. Unless Flickering Primeval Titan is better. Let me check the deck list again. Sorry, this is a lot of big brain time. Um, five mana, creature. Oh, I can just get Scape Shift at this point and kill my opponent, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lands, uh, two Valakuts, seven mountains, or three Valakuts and six mountains. What is that? Three times three times six is nine. Why can't I do basic math? 54 damage. That kills my opponent. <laughs> Sweet. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, Talari West. Okay. Uh, bring to light. Bring the light scape shift. <sighs> oh, this is going to take forever. We have to get so many mountains. <laughs> Alright, Valakut. There's three Valakuts and six mountains. <clears throat> and then we have to target them all in ten minutes. I'm glad this is the last game, because this is going to lag so badly. I can't believe we found a way to win there. I remembered seeing Crumbling Vestige, and I was like, oh yeah, it's cool, you can play Crumbling Vestige and Vesuva to get two mana off a of Prime Titan. You know, Primeval Titan, if uh, the mood strikes you for some victory-winning combo, but like, Omnath, Prime Time, getting Crumbling Vestige allows you to cast Bring Delight for five colors, which is pretty sweet. Okay, that's um, three Valakuts, then we're going to get the Triome, Sacred Foundry. This is taking multiple minutes to do after multiple minutes to think of how to do this. I'm just glad it worked out. <laughs> it's like four mana away to win the game. Four mana away to win the game. How, what other four mana ways to win the game do we have? Says the man forgetting he's playing Scape Shift as his primary win condition. <laughs> oh man, this is great. Okay, we get the Savai Triome just so we have access to all colors of mana post Scape Shift if my opponent had like an Angel's Grace or something. So Steam Vents... Let me double check that Savai Triome is a mountain. Well, that'd feel really bad if it wasn't. That's the Mardu one, right? 
It is a mountain. Good to know. Okay, steam vents, stomping ground, and stomp. Uh, nope. I'm not gonna pay any life. <laughs> Oh my gosh, am I going to die before putting all these triggers on the stack? Oh no, I might actually not be able to target all these uh, because of like Moto's weird glitch thing. If I can't, I'm going to request reimbursement for this league because this is ridiculous. I'll even have it on video for them. 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30... 31, or 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51 damage? Always yes, always yes, always yes, always yield? <laughs> ah, yeah, we did it! <laughs> we did it! That was sweet. Alright, I will see you guys in round three. Alrighty, round three, here we go. I ended up taking a much longer break between rounds than I thought I was going to. <laughs> I got distracted, and then I was like, oh, shoot, I never finished recording. <laughs> All right, reveal Yorian to start. Well, we got ramp into Battle of Wits. Um, if we draw even, like, a land, this is good. Problem is, I'm against Lurus. Uh, we are going to keep this. If my opponent starts Inquisition and takes Search for Tomorrow, I'm... Gonna be a little annoyed. Alright, it's either Jund Luris or Luris Burn. Okay, Swift Spear to start. They hit us for one, we go to 19. Uh, we untap. We draw a Hinterland Harbor, which is a tap land. Play Botanical Sanctum. Suspend Search. Pass the turn. I mean, it'd be really cool if we won with Battle of Wits. Just saying. Uh, top decking an untapped land that we could then into the north would be awesome. Opponent plays a Bloodstained Mire, gets in for one. Battle of Wits only really gets thwarted by uh, Assassin's Trophy. I think as far as what is our opponent is playing. They could have Thought Seas and stuff before we get there, but... Okay, opponent shocks Blood Crypt, goes down to 15. Black Red. Croxa? Scourge of the Skyclaves. Alright. Search for tomorrow, ticking down. We draw a Verdant Catacombs. So we do want to into the north here. Play Verdant Catacombs, crack it, get a swamp, just a basic snow-covered swamp here. Then we end to the north, um, probably for a snow island, I imagine. All right, pass the turn. Next turn we can play Battle of Wits, but our opponent has two, two hits to kill us, I guess. The fact that they did not play any cards and didn't play a land frightens me, because there's a good chance we're just going to die to severe damage here. We go down to 13. I'm gonna play like a Liliana or something. Black green for a Tarmogoyf. My opponent has 10 damage on the board. Search for tomorrow finds us a... Um, gonna go with a Plains. Then we draw Simic Growth Chamber. Alright, I'm calling you out opponent. You don't have a fetch land or a lightning bolt <laughs> or any, or like a Knight's Whisper. <laughs> That's right. You don't have those things. You're holding basic mountain, basic swamp, and Inquisition. Actually, Inquisition might kill me. No, there's sorceries in the grave already. <laughs> yeah, let's see what you can do. Damn it. <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> turn four, uh, or turn three Battle of Wits is not sufficient, unfortunately. And they had a lightning bolt, too. Yep, all right. That's fair. Cool. Uh, yeah, no sideboarding. We don't we don't sideboard in this deck. But now we know what we're up against, so we know how to play and what to mulligan. <laughs> All right. I would like to play first. Reveal Yorian. One land. Not gonna cut it here. We're gonna mulligan. Okay. Um, this sucks because we have to use our fetch land prior to playing Colony Heart Expedition. Um, I am going to keep this. The question is, what do we put back? <sighs> Reclaimer is good. It guarantees landfall triggers for Colony Heart Expedition. Noble Hierarch gets us blue and an additional green, which could accelerate us into a Dryad, but we don't really have a lot of extra lands to play. Maybe I put back Dryad here. Dryad's really good, but 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try this, I think. So we're gonna fetch a stomping ground to start and play noble hierarch. I think yeah, I think that's what makes the most sense. It does it is really crappy because like we do have to uh, shock and take damage, turning on Scourge of the Sky Claves really quickly. Pass the turn. Um, I really prefer that Colony Heart, like Noble Hierarch, survives so we can play Colony Heart Expedition um, before playing a land. But if I do that, I can't cast Elvish Reclaimer as well. So my opponent starts Wooded Foothills, cracks Wooded Foothills, finds a Blood Crypt, untapped. Plays a Mishra's Bauble. Looks at the top card of our deck. It's trying to use that information to determine whether or not they need to use removal. And according to them, they do. So, we untap. They draw. We draw. Lightning Bolt. So we can either play Reclaimer or we can play Colony Heart Expedition. I think we just Reclaimer, then Godless Shrine tapped. Pass the turn. There was probably a much better sequence, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I probably should have anticipated removal, because it's even if my opponent sided out like fatal pushes and stuff, um, they probably kept the burn in. So they either take... I mean, I could see them taking any one of the cards we have here. Um, if I were my opponent, I would probably take Colony Heart Expedition, because I wouldn't be particularly scared of Lightning Bolt. And if I take Colony Heart Expedition, that gives me like six turns to win before I can cast Battle of Wits and win with it. Okay, they take Lightning Bolt. Uh, they play Bloodstained Mire, they fetch. They get a Stomping Ground. Untapped. So no Death Shadow this turn. They play Swift Spear. Okay, they don't attack. I was like, if they attack, the only thing they could have is like Mutagenic Growth. Play Colony Heart Expedition, play Ketria Triome. Get a uh, quest counter. Pass the turn. So opponents turn three, they play a Verdant Catacombs. If I mean, they're attacking and we're not blocking. <laughs> That's how that works out. Because we need the landfall trigger pretty badly. I kind of expect them to have an Assassin's Trophy or a Maelstrom Pulse for Battle of Wits. Because they saw it game one. We untap. We draw Hour of Promise. Uh, well, we can't cast anything... We can't get a double landfall off Reclaimer. I mean, we can um, if we got a fetch land, but we can't do it uh, on our opponent's turn. Okay, opponent starts by cracking Verdant Catacombs. For an Overgrown Tomb. Tapped. Interesting. Opponent feels the need to preserve their life total while playing Suicide Death Shadow. Interesting. They're going to start by Bolt Reclaimer. All right. Do we get a fetch land? Sack Godless Shrine. So we could get a fetch land here. Am I putting a shadow of doubt? Unravel the ether. Choose target enchantment. Its owner shuffles it into their library. I mean, that's an answer. Okay. So Elvish Reclaimer, we need to get um, probably a triome that just gives us colors. So we have red, green, and blue. So we need white and black. So, like, Savai Triome will do, I think. Okay. Reclaimer down. We need some mana. I can put Yorian into my hand next turn, if nothing else. Even though that feels pretty bad. We untap. I mean, what are the odds? Play Reclaimer. Uh, if I was Psychic or Clairvoyant... I knew that was going to happen. I would have gotten a Flagstones of Trocare, but there's just no way to know that. Okay, opponent plays a Verdant Catacombs. And you could never expect to draw a duplicate card in Battle of Wits, even though it happens all the time. Because you're not playing a 60-card deck. Okay, opponent attacks us for one. And they played Death Shadow as a 2-2. Two -two. We untap. We draw a Radiant Fountain. Play Radiant Fountain. Um, I'm going to need another blue source to win with Battle of Wits. I could sack a land to get Growth Chamber and then pick up Radiant Fountain for an untapped land to play next turn. Okay, we're going to pass. And I think to play around Battle Rage, 
a little bit. Does that matter, actually? Hang on. I guess we would block the Swift Spear either way, probably. Opponent plays a second Swift Spear. Goes to combat. Attacks for a lot. So block here. Opponent cracks Verdant Catacombs. I could get Blast Zone and just reset the whole board. They fetch and shock Blood Crypt. Sack Stomping Ground. I mean, if they just have, like, a Fatal Push, that would be fine. They're gonna Assassin's Trophy us? Okay, that actually opens up, um, a new way to win. So we need a basic island here. Okay, Reclaimer. We're gonna go up to five lands. So Reclaimer needs to get... Because we're probably going to have to cast Hour of Promise next turn to stay alive. To, like, just make enough blockers. So let's get Blast Zone. Oh my gosh, I clicked Blast Zone, but when I mouse upped, it was over Blood Crypt. Okay, well, I guess it doesn't matter as long as it wasn't a land we already had. So we're not going to pay two life. That was a mistake. Oh, I hate Moto's interface so much. Mm. Absolutely drives me insane. So we draw Rampant Growth. So green, red, whatever, whatever, whatever. Hour of Promise. Um, we get Field of the Dead. Now I could get Blast Zone now, um, or I can make an additional zombie by getting Growth Chamber and picking up Radiant Fountain, and I kind of like that a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Growth Chamber plan. As soon as I can see it in the list, I have to be very careful to click it. Stack the triggers properly. Make some zombies, pick up Radiant Fountain, play Radiant Fountain, gain more life, make another zombie. Okay, pass the turn. And then next turn we can play Battle of Wits and Rampant Growth. <laughs> put it as one turn to top deck. They could also just put Luris in their hand and next turn, like, Luris Seal of Fire. So if my opponent attacks, we chump everything, even though they could have a spell here. Because the downside is a lot more damage if we don't. Like, the best thing they could have here is another spell. And if it's an Assassin's Trophy for Field of the Dead, that's kind of okay. It's like, maybe we can still survive. I get a forest. We lose all our guys. My opponent is representing seven damage next turn. We get a Farseek. So blue, blue, whatever, whatever, whatever. Battle of Wits. I really wish I had gotten that Blast Zone when I wanted it. But, you know, Blood Crypt is just as good. Not, um, far seek, And then we have to hope our opponent just bricks on the top deck here. Get a random Triome. Pass the turn! I could have Blast Zoned here and it would have been great. Did you top deck a spell? Spell, we're dead exactly. Um, same with Fetch Land, Shock Land... Uh, we're dead to basically everything. <laughs> Top deck your singleton basic opponent. That would keep us alive. Oh my god, we did it. Even through the, uh, misclick, which is very difficult because, like, my click is not precise. My hand moves while I click. Alright, no sideboard because we don't have one. It's a wish board only. I like to see the fact that my opponent brought in Unravel the Aether because in the general case it's not that good against us. I mean, it's good against Battle of Wits, the card, but how often do we actually win with Battle of Wits besides twice this league? Um, danger. Oh, one sec, I'm gonna have to help. Alright, uh, we are gonna mulligan. Had to stop and help my uh, mom get the groceries in. Oh, this hand would be so good if it had two lands. Uh, we're on the draw, but I can't risk it. Uh, this is slightly better. So we put back Scape Shift. And I guess we put back Madcap Experiment. Karn by himself is pro probably not good enough because artifacts aren't particularly good against our opponent. Um, it's like maybe a percent or so better than Madcap Experiment is, I think. Um, so my opponent starts Fetch Shock, Swift Spear, which is bad news. They hit us for one, we go to 19. Opponent is playing Mutagenic Growths. I was not aware of that. It does really greatly accelerate their game plan, especially if they can get it on the turn one. Um, okay, so what do we do here? That's not good. We either start with, like, Breeding Pool tapped, 
or Bloodstain. I think I'm going to Bloodstain Mire for Raugren Triome. Um, or maybe Ketria, actually. We're going to try and save our other fetch land, if at all possible, for like a potential Uro, or not Uro, Omnath, or... Okay, we, did, we get hit for one. Opponent plays a Verdant Catacombs. Cracks Verdant Catacombs. Into an Overgrown Tomb. And a Scourge. That is an enormous problem because we have no answer to that. So we're going to have to get Raugren Triome and basically hope to top deck Path, which is a very small percentage. I wish I was playing uh, like a Singleton Oust even instead of a path. So then I could always wish for like a removal pile or something. Well, we drew Lightning Bolt. That might, um, that might make a difference. We'll Bolt Swift Spear. We'll play Temple Garden. Tapped, past the turn. But we're dead to Teamer Battle Rage. I think we're dead to a Lightning Bolt. Uh, we're dead to Fetch Shock Swift Spear, <laughs> are we? It's pretty close. If they have a spell to cast that does anything here, we're going to be in trouble. Um, yep, we go to seven. Wish I could get like a timely reinforcements, but I don't have that in this list. Um, Uro wouldn't really make a difference here. If I could get like Uro into Path to Exile, then maybe. Second Scourge. Yeah, I think we're just dead. This is not a great matchup for us. Um, and we kept we kept a very slow hand, but I also didn't like mulliganing past like four and is just like a, a completely losing proposition. It's not good at all. So um, I'll see you guys in round four. Alrighty, round four. Here we go. I would love to play first. Reveal Yorian. Um, tap land hinterland harbor kind of sucks, but. Uh, Noble Hierarch Botanical Sanctum seems pretty good to kind of like make up for that. We also, I mean, if I draw another one mana ramp or a one mana spell I can play, I can uh, far seek for a land that'll let Hinterland Harbor come in untapped. So start Botanical Sanctum, Noble Hierarch, pass the turn. All right. Opponent plays Black Cleave Cliffs into a Lightning Bolt. So this is probably another kind of like a uh, shadow deck. Or it could be the, oh, what is it called? Rakdos mid-range deck. So we're going to play Arid Mesa, fetch up a basic planes, Farseek for Raugren Triome, um, and then next turn we can play Hinterland Harbor. Yeah, I really wish we'd had that Noble, because then next turn we could Hour of Promise. When it plays Bloodstain Mire for a basic swamp. Okay, so they're main decking Blood Moon. Um, does that mean I need to scape shift for my basics? Do I discard Primeval Titan? There's a really good chance my opponent has Blood Moon because I'm fairly certain they main deck it. The last person that was playing this deck did. Uh, let's look at Blood Moon um, really quickly. Yeah, they play four in the main deck. So what I'm going to do, and this might be a little insane, is discard Hour of Promise. Even though we could play it earlier. Okay, we draw Wooded Foothills. Oh, I don't want to do this. Play Wooded Foothills. Crack for a basic forest. Escape shift, sacking Botanical Sanctum, Raugren Triome, and then we are going to get Basic Forest, Snow Covered Forest that is, and a Basic Island, not Snow Covered, just to get around the whole Blood Moon shenanigans. Pass the turn. Emergency Escape shift. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd kept that Hour of Promise, but... Um, if my opponent plays Blood Moon here, Hour of Promise is way worse than Primeval Titan. Opponent starts Marsh Flats, getting Swamp, into Liliana. <sighs> well, gotta discard the Titan. 
That sucks. We have to play out lands. Um, Windswept Teeth is slightly higher value here. We can put Yorian into our hand to have something to play next turn. Windswept Teeth can only fetch non-basics right now. When it plays a Blood Crypt, they can uptick Liliana. Oh shoot, they can uptick Liliana and then um, reanimate Croxa. So discard Hinterland Harbor. Okay, so they play Croxa, we discard Yorian. Okay, opponent has to sacrifice Croxa. We un or they don't have to sacrifice Croxa, they escaped it. We draw a Noble Hierarch. Yeah, unfortunately we got hit with just slightly too much discard this game. Um, if I had kept Hour of Promise, um, I could have gotten out field, but my opponent's deck plays four main deck Blood Moons, and they were playing as though they were holding a Blood Moon. Um, so let's see if they had it. They did not have it. So opponent played in such a way, uh, knowing that we had a greedy mana base, that um, they knew we were going to have to try and play around Blood Moon, and uh, we just got got. It's uh, pretty skillful by the opponent to fetch out their basics first, rather than just go maximum greed. But like, if they did have Blood Moon, and they played it, and I didn't make the plays that I played up until this point, we would have never cast anything and just lost horrendously. Yep. Alright. Good plays, opponent. Good plays. No sideboard, because we don't have one. Alright, we'll play first. Reveal Yorian. Um, so I gotta play Utopia Sprawl on a non-basic forest. Against the deck playing Blood Moon. Alright, let's see what happens. So we're going to get a breeding pool, put Utopia Sprawl on it, naming White, because we're going to go for a Gifts Ungiven play. And if I get completely obliterated by Blood Moon, um, them's the breaks, I guess, I don't know. I could wait until I end to the north, uh, but I don't think that's prudent. I think having access to three, potentially four mana on turn one is the way to go. So Utopia Sprawl on White, pass the turn. And the reason we're naming white there is because uh, if we're going for the Unburial Rites plan, we need to um, have white for the flashback, basically. Opponent starts, uh, fetch, blood crypt, tapped. We untap. We draw an Elvish Reclaimer. So into the north, we'll get a basic forest. Play Botanical Sanctum. Play Reclaimer. And next turn, we can go Gifts Ungiven on Burial Rites. That is, if we don't get Thought Seized. My opponent could have a Thought Seize. They fetch up a basic Swamp. Now, the Reclaimer is not vital to our plan, so if my opponent gets rid of it, that's fine. They Stomp the Reclaimer. We untap. We draw Elish Norn, which is not the Gift's target of choice, thankfully. We're going to get Iona, and we're going to name Black. The odds that my opponent has enough burn to kill Iona is very low. Um, if they Blood Moon us here, I have to go for something else. So we have to dodge Blood Moon this time. Please, no Blood Moon. <sighs> I knew this was going to happen. I knew I was going to get punished by it, but that sucks. So uh, we got a Gift Sun given here. And we're going to get a whole bunch of ramp spells, I think. So we can get... Um, we're gonna have the green mana. We need to have Rampant Growth, uh, Far Seek, and then like I think Renin Six and Uro. I think that's what we do. I could have gone for like all Rampant Growth effects. Let's see what our opponent gives us. We're losing access to, or we're losing our Utopia Sprawl here. That's that's a thing that's happened. Okay, they give us Renin Six and Uro. They don't want us to be fetching our basics. I probably should have gone for like Search for Tomorrow as well. Okay, we draw to Fairy Time Raveler. Play Renin Six. Yeah, I think I, I think I made a really big mistake there. <laughs> I think I should have gone for just like all four Far Seek kind of effects. Um, okay, play Polluted Delta. Pass the turn. Like I should have gotten a Search for Tomorrow instead of Uro. I think I could have even gone for uh, like an Hour of Promise on top of all of that, or a. Um, not scapeshift, but prime time even. So we're getting thought seized. 
Opponent probably takes Explorer, as that is our only playable card. I imagine. I don't know for certain. But take Explorer. Okay. The good news is we still have a ton of ramp spells we can get. Uh, that's not one of them, though. No lands left in our grave, so we're going to shorten the clock. Yeah, I should have just gone for the all ramp spells. I don't know what I was thinking. Um... Because my opponent very correctly identified the, hey, we should not let him have access to his basic lands. I don't know what kind of greed I thought I was going to get away with, but it uh, didn't work. I'm going to cast a Bone Crusher Giant, so Ren and Six and my, my own life total is not long for this world. I hit Ren for two, he goes down to one, or she goes down to one. He, she, tree folk person, I'm not sure. Um, draw Karn. Is there anything I can wish for with Karn that would make a difference here? Before you ask, before anybody asks, yes, that is a planar bridge. I couldn't think of what to put in the 14th slot, so I was like, this is Battle of Wits, what's the worst that could happen? Um, so I could get like a walking ballista to give myself a little time. I could I could get an ensnaring bridge, it would be wrong, that, because my opponent's going to have answers to artifacts. Uh, Trinosphere hurts us more than it helps us. Pithing Needle does nothing. Coding is ambitious. Crucible doesn't do anything. So, Uptick Ren. Oh, I should have put a thematic compass in the side. There you go. Those of you that don't know, thematic compass is an artifact from Ixalan that I actually used to main deck in my um, control builds of Battle of Wits. And thematic compass is a two-mana artifact that says you can pay three mana and tap it to search your library for a basic land. And uh, if you have seven or more lands, it flips into a land, and that land is Maze of Ith, that also taps for colorless, so it's it's actually a really strong card um, in a control deck. But like, why would you play it in a um, in a modern control list unless uh, you needed access to like basics all the time? And it's like the f f I don't know 80th best control card that exists in modern. So there's no reason to run it in a uh, actual competitive list unless you're Battle of Wits. I could also get a Worm Coil Engine, then I just draw a couple cards and we're good to go. So let's go, let's go Worm Coil Engine, because that makes any two lands good. Any two lands. Gonna be good. I could Summoner's Pact next turn for Dryad, but if Dryad dies, then I can't pay for the Summoner's Pact and I lose. Okay, opponent stomps Ren and Six, so they die terribly. Untaps. So best possible sequence of top decks is we top deck a basic island, um play Uro, hit a land, and then play Worm Coil, and try and stabilize. Next best sequence of top decks is, um, well, I was going to say a land to play Dryad, but we are taking 10 damage next turn. All right, there is a land. Land, please. <laughs> Any land gets me to Worm Coil. Watch my opponent have the thoughtsies just to add insult to injury. Just extinguish my last glimmer of hope. Okay, they hit us for 10, we go to 5. I should have put Yorian in my hand, I didn't. I, there's no land that I can draw that lets me play him. Inquisition, well they can't take Worm Coil, so there. Maybe I should be playing Manamorphoses in this deck. No! <laughs> the anti-land! Uh, well, we played around Blood Moon, game 1, and they didn't have it, so we got punished. And we didn't play around Blood Moon in game two, and they had it, so we got punished. Sometimes that's this is just going to be what happens. All right, I will see you all in round five. All right, round five. Here we go. Oof. Um, I am going to keep this. The upside is huge, and the downside is also enormous. Um. Okay. Opponent starts Verdant Catacombs and passes. What is most likely to work here? is going to be Utopia Sprawl naming blue on a basic forest. I've got a feeling that Noble Hierarch would just die immediately. So get a regular forest, Utopia Sprawl that forest, and name blue. Another card that's worth consideration in um, this list that does synergize with Yorian, though it doesn't ramp, but it's a decent cantrip, is Abundant Growth. Because um, Abundant Growth is basically the Arkham's Astrolabe, but only for green. Because uh, it costs one green to play, filters your filters that land into any color, and then um, it draws a card when it enters. So, like, you can Yorian it the same way that you would Yorian a uh, 
an astrolabe, which made Yorian pretty good. Please don't have an assassin's trophy. That would just break my heart. Okay. So we get Croxid. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard a uh, Noble Hierarch. Because Noble Hierarch does not have a very high chance of surviving anything at this stage. We untap. We draw a Breeding Pool. Um, so I can either play out Uro. I can play Colony Heart Expedition and a Tap Land Far Seek next turn. I kind of like that a little bit. Play out Colony Heart. Play out Breeding Pool. Always yes. Always yield. Pass the turn. Okay, we get Thought Seized. And we're not that far off of uh, playing Uro and then um, escaping him, actually. Opponent takes Far Seek. Okay. That was the only guaranteed landfall we had, so that makes a lot of sense. They cycle a Baron more. They crack Bloodstained Mire. Okay, we get Inquisition, so my opponent can take Explore. We draw a Mystic Sanctuary. Play Uro. So we gain some life. Draw a card. Iona. <laughs> Put a Mystic Sanctuary into play. Uh, sack it. Pass the turn. One more land, and... Uh, we draw a land, we can play Uro from the grave, which is pretty good, I hear. If my opponent reanimates Croxa, we discard Iona. Um, if by some miracle we ever cast Iona, we name Black. Okay, we untap. We draw Scape Shift. Uh, that gives us the landfall we need <laughs> to activate Colony Heart. Alright, so we Scape Shift. Sacking Breeding Pool and Mystic Sanctuary only. Uh, we can get a Raugrin Triome and a Ketria Triome. Another time that I wish I had Bajuka Bog, actually, is right now. Um, that would help a lot. So I'm thinking I'm going to add a Bajuka Bog to the uh, main deck here. Um, yeah, we'll just get the Triomes, I think. All right, pass the turn. So you have green, blue, green, blue. We can sack Colony Heart at any time. Opponent untaps. And opponent is going for the Croxa. All right. We discard Iona, which should hopefully strike fear at our opponent's heart. <laughs> okay, Croxa did escape. Um, they play Stomping Ground tapped. We sack Colony Heart Expedition. Uh, we get a, I guess, Mountain, no, Swamp, and I think an Island here. All right, untap. Because if I draw on Burial Rites, it would be just, it would be justice. Okay, we get a growth spiral. So we're gonna go for the Uro plan. Green, green, blue, blue. Uh, exile Wooded Foothills, Noble Hierarch, Far Seek, Explore, Colony Heart Expedition. Draw card. Gain three life. We get another Uro, which is what we're gonna discard to Croxo when it attacks. All right, pass the turn. I mean, Hour of Promise is going to be devastating, so... <laughs> Titan versus Titan. I can't believe we've had so many emergency scape shifts. Red mana. Sacking Nurturing Peatland. Okay. Black mana. They Fatal Push Uro. They attack us for six. I'm going to discard our other Uro here. So we take six, go to 19. Untap. Draw Windswept Teeth. So, if I play Windswept Teeth and get two Field of the Deads, and then crack Windswept Teeth, it's better to just get a Field of the Dead first, I think. Hour of Promise. Then we get Field of the Dead and a Fetch Land, I think? Just any Fetch Land, because it gets better next turn. Make some Zombies. Play Windswept Teeth. Make a Zombie. Fetch a snow-covered forest. And I do, I kind of want to be hellbent this turn. Just because I don't want to take too much extra damage. Then we can growth spiral. Oh, bring to light would be great. It's unfortunate we're going to have to discard that. But we're going to play an Uro next turn. Uh, and we can actually use our Scalding Tarn that we fetched up with Field of the Dead to get Mystic Sanctuary. Putting Scape Shift back and killing our opponent on the spot. So discard, bring to light. Lose a zombie. And if my opponent attacks, I am just going to triple block. I don't care if they have removal or not. Okay, opponent casts a Bloodbraid Elf. Getting a Fatal Push. Okay, now triple blocking is no longer an option. Sad face. They take out a token. 
Bloodbraid resolves. Opponent attacks, attacks. We can't discard a card we don't have. Block here. Block here. I could just kill them by getting scapeshift back on my upkeep, right? Island. Island, island. Yeah, okay, they're just dead. I don't need to go the whole Uro route. Just Mystic Sanctuary. Get a zombie. Put scapeshift back. Yeah. And the opponent is polite enough to concede. Thank you. Thank you, because this deck chews up time tutoring like no tomorrow. And no sideboarding, because we don't have a sideboard. I have to say that, like, just having a full wishboard in this deck, and this is not the optimum wishboard, this is just what I could think to put in. Um, I've not been making as many notes about what I wish I had in the wishboard, but it hasn't come up all that often. Haha, <laughs> wish, said lots of times. Um... But, like, I have to say that not having the stress of, oh my gosh, what do I take, what do I, what do I put in, what do I take out, is kind of nice. So, uh, maybe Karn Wishboard is, like, maybe we drop the Wishboard for Karn down to, like, I don't know, three cards, or the most important four. And then we play, like, the Glittering Wish sideboard. Because, like, that could be good. Alright, Reveal Yorian. Uh, if we had two lands, this hand would be amazing. Like, if, if Scapeshift or Primeval Titan or Bring to Light was a land, this hand would be great. But unfortunately, I've got a mulligan. <laughs> this is not a hand! Deck, this is not a hand. It's funny, even playing, like, the equivalent of six decks put together, and we still can't, um... Like, we could still never, ever draw... Or, like, we still always draw, like, Pad Glacial Worm and Platinum Imperium and Iona. Oh, it's just silly. It's going to be a long time before Scapeshift is good, so we're going to put back Scapeshift. <laughs> goofy. Alright. Um, we draw Soccer Tribe Elder. So, play Snow Covered Forest, pass the turn. I would like to draw a different land to play than Crumbling Vestige, because I may need Crumbling Vestige to get the uh, one of the two colors of mana for Teferi. But, I mean... I don't really have control over that right now, so <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Just fixing my camera. Okay. Whoa. What happened there? All right. <clears throat> Opponent plays something costing red-green. It's Ren and Six. Not sure how that ever got out of place, but that fixes that. Um, we draw another Soccer Tribe Elder. Perfect. So play Crumbling Vestige, because we don't have any other choice. Uh, you know what? Add red. And play Steve! Pass the turn. Opponent plays a fetch land, cracks a fetch land, gets a blood crypt, untapped. Red, red, green, seasoned pyromancer. Okay. They have four cards left in their hand, they have to discard. Overgrown Tomb and a Mountain. Okay. Then they pick up Overgrown Tomb. Okay, on their end step, we're gonna get an island. Just a regular island. We untap, we draw, marsh flats. Well, we can play Teferi and bounce, uh, and then Teferi dies to Ren and Six Ping. I actually think this is okay, despite the massive card selection it gives my opponent by replaying Seasoned Pyromancer. Because in reality, all we're trying to do right now is just slow this game down. Down tick Teferi, bounce season, bounce season Pyro, we draw Terastodon. That's not really a card deck. I, it's it's a great Gifts Ungiven reanimator target, just blowing up three permanents, but it's not really what we want. Right. Okay, opponent plays Seasoned Pyro again. They discard Croxa and a land. They ping to Fairy, that makes sense. Play Bloodstained Mire. We pass, we untap. We draw a Hinterland Harbor, which is great. Because it lets us start by playing Explore here. Another Teferi. Play Hinterland Harbor. And we're going to go with uh, Sakura Tribe Elder here. We need to get that sixth land so that we can um, Summoner's Pact uh, Primeval Titan. Wait, no. I just... I have sixed. And my opponent was able to Fatal Push Sakura. It's fine, it's fine, we're gonna top deck an untapped land, everything will be fine. That's a massive punt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was gonna get a mountain, and then we'd have the option of Omnath, like, with the summoners pacting, and the... Uh, it hurt a lot, actually. At least, like, the League isn't riding on a play like that. My goodness. 
That would be terrible if I, like, lost the whole league because of this. Put a plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it. So they're playing Croxa. So we discard Terastodon. I mean, we can make them pick up Croxa again with Teferi. Give ourselves another chance at drawing a, uh, a land. We get hit for three. The worst part is Moto is like lagging and I didn't have the opportunity to right click. Cause like, look how slow the right click is. I just click right clicked three times. Finally, it came up. Pub plays Nile Spellbomb. Okay. No graveyard shenanigans for us. We get a rampant growth. Oh, but if I make him pick up Croxa, then we lose out on the Summoner's Pact. Because I have to discard it, and then what's the point? So next turn. And that's that's discounting my opponent having any other discard spell for it. Um Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with Teferi, bouncing Croxa. And the reasoning behind this is if I draw land right now, everything is fine. But otherwise I'm taking like nine damage next turn off Croxa alone. Okay, Colony Heart Expedition gives me something to discard. And then we just pray they have no other um no other discard spells. So we'll go get that mountain. Now we can have six safely, unlike last time. That was <laughs> so bad. Uh, opponent untaps. So they play Croxa. I guess if they have another red source so that they can replay Croxa, that would be terrifying. Uh, discard Colony Heart Expedition, because we don't need that. Oh, they do, don't they? They picked up a mountain off of Ren and Six, right? Oh, but they can't replay it without escaping, and escaping costs cards and graveyard, and everything's fine. No! <laughs> I needed that. So this card's Summoner's Pact, because it was the whole point, and that was exactly what we were worried about, but this was our only choice. That's sad. We had cool things planned. Primeval Titan things planned. Everybody likes playing Primeval Titan. Look at how many decks do. Like, every variant of... never mind. Anyway, taking three here. We untap. Yeah, I'm actually just going to scoop now. <laughs> so it's kind of an early scoop, but I'm very tired. Look at this. Nothing was happening for... We were we were definitely dead by here. So... <sighs> Alright, gonna restart the client and play what might be the last game. I can't remember. I have lost track. I should be clear while Moto is loading in here. Um, I absolutely threw that game away by uh, uh, letting my opponent fatal push Soccer Tribe Elder. That was, that was a huge, enormous mistake. Uh, return to game, please. Thank you can't remember if that was game one or game two. Oh, that was game two. This is game three. Okay. I would like to play first. Omnath. Yeah, we'll keep. So this is a turn one, nothing. Turn two, Coiling Oracle or Growth Spiral. Uh, turn three, potentially an Omnath. So this hand looks pretty decent. Start Windswept Teeth, pass the turn. We're going to want to fetch up a Raugrin Triome. Had to think about that for a second. Almost fetched up the wrong thing. All right, so probably losing Omnath or Ramp Spell here. We lose the Coiling Oracle. Fetch up Raugrin Triome. We get a Verdant Catacombs. Play Hinterland Harbor. Yeah, no reason to do it now. We can, we can do this at instant speed. I don't want to play the Verdant Catacombs if I don't have to, because playing a fetch land post Omnath is way better, but irrelevant because my opponent has more hand hate, so Growth Spiral. Uh, play Verdant Catacombs. Opponent should probably take Omnath here. I get Summoner's Pact and play Omnath next turn. But then I've used up my turn after that. So Verdant Catacombs, we're going to go get uh, Ketria Triome. Untap. If I draw any of Omnath col colors, I'm gonna... You know what? Yeah, let's, uh... It sucks, because we have to play a land first, but... Play Polluted Delta. Crack Polluted Delta. We'll get a basic island. Summoner's Pact. Get Omnath. Maybe I should have gotten Uro, but... Uh, white, red, green, blue. Omnath. Get a Colony Heart Expedition. Next turn, we pay all of our mana to Summoner's Pact so we don't lose. 
Watch them be playing a Fulminator Mage and just, like, completely ruin us by having us die to our own, um, own Summoner's Pact to greed. This opponent fetches up an Overgrown Tomb tapped. They do not have a Fatal Push for Omnath, thankfully. They untap. Play a Swamp. Play a Lily. Down tick Lily, we lose Omnath. Okay. So we untap. Pay green, green, blue, whatever. We will pay to prevent that. We draw Field of the Dead. So play Field of the Dead. We'll discard Colony Heart Expedition to uh, Liliana Uptick. And then we next turn play Scavenger Grounds Prime Time. Simple as that. Opponent definitely doesn't have more discard. Mm, and it still happens. Opponent takes Primeval Titan. Just snap takes Primeval Titan so they don't have to deal with that. Well, now we have to discard Colony Heart Expedition. Any ramp spell and we can start making zombies though. That's cool. So I could get like an hour of promise off the top of my deck. That'd be awesome. Also, like top decking a, another Primeval Titan would be great. We untap, explore. Start by casting explore and tapping incorrectly for it, but you know, like you do. Play scavenger grounds. I don't think I play Utopia Sprawl. There's no need to hold up scavenger grounds because my opponent. You know what? Play Utopia Sprawl. Um, I'm going to leave up Scavenger Grounds because my opponent could uptick Liliana discarding um, discarding the Titan and then like... Oh, actually, we wouldn't be able to respond to that, so we wouldn't have priority. I should have just put Yorian in my hand and kept Utopia Sprawl in hand, so I had a 4-5 to play next turn. Okay, Colothus is pretty good. Opponent plays a Verdant Catacombs and discards their last card in hand. It's a Forest. We untap. We draw a lightning bolt. Say, get out of here, Liliana. Opponent cracks Verdant Catacombs and finds. Stomping ground. Man, like, any ramp spell here would be great. Okay, opponent eats Primeval Titan from our grave. Uh, they gain two life. We lose two life. They play Nile Spellbomb. Presumably they crack it to draw a card. Um, even though that takes them off of a lot of Clothis stuff, uh, they kind of need to top deck other things to kill us, because Clothis is going to be too slow, in their mind. Probably actually is not going to be too slow to really kill us. We untap. Ooh, we draw Gifts Ungiven. Hmm. So we got six mana. What could we Gifts for that would matter here? Let's take a look at the old deck list real quick. What is if I've still got it up? Um, two mana or less. I mean, I could just go get four lands. That might be the, uh, the thing to do here. Actually, just, we'll just wait till our opponent's end step and get the Unburial Rights package, because, I mean, if I Unburial Rights Iona naming Black, I don't think my opponent can actually answer her. We can do this in response to them making us discard. I could get Terastodon, blow up all my own lands, and kill them in one attack. That'd be pretty sweet. Opponent has Pillage. That does not stop us from doing what we want to do. So that, that goes. And they play Scavenging Ooze, but have no mana to activate Scoos. Perfect. So on their end step, Gifts Ungiven. Get uh, Iona and Unburial Rites. Okay. Fail to find, fail to find. Put those two in the grave, because they have to. Untap. And opponent scoops it up. We get there with the old <clears throat> double entomb trick off of Gifts Ungiven. So, I'm going to talk about the deck here for a moment. A um, couple interesting things of note. Was Karn good? Karn had the opportunity to be good. Um, was it better than a Serum Visions? Absolutely. Uh, we didn't really miss the whole Gifts Ungiven, Mystic Sanctuary, Serum Visions plan, because that is a very narrow set of circumstances under which it's good. Um, Blood Moon still absolutely destroys us in a lot of ways that most people can't even imagine. Uh, no surprise there. Um, I think the Karn Wishboard's a good plan. I like the idea of maybe doing the multicolored glittering wishboard and minimizing on the actual number of targets for Karn. Um, now that we don't have silver bullet creatures we're really tutoring for with uh, Eladomri's Call, maybe, perhaps, that's better. I'm not sure. Eladomri's Call for our main haymakers is probably still better, um, at least in the meantime. Um, 
Karn almost had the opportunity to shine when we got Worm Coil Engine. We just didn't draw lands to play Worm Coil Engine, which was unfortunate. Um, Omnath had a pretty big highlight early on, letting us do crazy shenanigans with Scapeshift and Titan and all that stuff to just get tons of mana and kill our opponent. Um, that was really cool. Made me feel really accomplished being able to do that in a Battle of Wits deck. Um, I'm thinking about adding... Now, there's, there's at least one circumstance where this is good, and probably a lot where it's worse than the main deck configuration. I'm thinking of adding a single oust to the deck, because there was one scenario where we needed to Gifts Ungiven for hard removal, and like Gifts Ungiven getting uh, Teferi Bolt and Path wasn't good enough. Um, so like Teferi Bolt, Path, Oust guarantees that we get like two cards in that scenario that are good. Um, but I don't know. Um, I'm not totally sure what other adjustments I'm going to make. I'm going to add Bajuka Bog to the deck. That is a thing that is happening. And uh, I'll let you know if I come up with anything else in the meantime. Until then, I, this has been Need for Greed, uh, number three, I think. So if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. And remember, you can follow me on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, though the last few have been earlier than that in the day. And, yeah, I want you to know that you're all wonderful human beings, and I really appreciate you guys' support for the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!